Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bits of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of integers and how we can represent them in binary. So up until this point, we've largely glossed over how we represent our values in memory. So we've just kind of offhand mentioned that our values are just stored as these ones and zeros in memory and in our registers. But we haven't talked about how exactly do these ones and zeros, uh, this binary code, uh, how does this actually represent our values? And specifically, we're going to be looking at our positive and negative integers today, right? So our whole numbers. So I think a great place to start um, when talking about binary is with our base 10 numbers, right? Something that we're all very familiar with, just our normal decimal numbers. So here we have just a normal decimal number, 724. And because it's a decimal number, we say it's a base 10 number. Um, now, what exactly does this mean to be base 10? It means that for each of the digits that we have, each of these digits can be one of 10 possible values. It can be some value between zero and nine. So in this case, we have a four in the ones place, a two in the tens place, and a seven in the hundreds place. But what exactly does this you know, ones place and uh, tens place and hundreds place come from, right? Now, this all really comes from the fact that each of these values are actually multiplied by our base raised to some power. Right, starting from uh, zero all the way to n minus one, right? Where n minus one, or rather n, is just the number of digits that we have. So let's go ahead and see how we can break apart 724 into these individual components, and we get this uh, sum of products here. So we can break up 724 into seven times 10 squared, plus two times 10 to the first, plus four times 10 to the zero. And it becomes pretty clear on why we have this ones place and tens place and hundreds place. So four is in the ones place because it's multiplied by 10 to the zero, which is one. Two is in the tens place because it's multiplied by 10 to the one, which is just 10. And likewise, seven is in the hundreds place because it's multiplied by 10 squared, um, which is 100. Now, of course, we can reduce this all back down and we get 700 plus 20 plus four, right? 724. Okay, so you may be wondering why we went over this, right? You know, many people um, already know this fairly intuitively, um, but this is actually a very crucial thing, right, before we move on to binary, because we're really learning about how our number systems work. And at the end of the day, what is binary? Binary is just another one of these number systems, but instead of having a base of 10, we now have a base of two. So let's talk about base two numbers. So here we have a decimal number 11, and this is equal to 1011 in binary. So again, binary is a base two number. That means that each of the digits that we have in our binary number can take on one of two values, this time just zero and one. And we're gonna have this same, or we can do the same decomposition of this value into these ones and zeros multiplied by your base raised to our, you know, a power, um, going from zero to n minus one. But this time our power is going to be a power of two. So we can break up this uh, 1011 into the sum of products of 1 times 2 cubed plus 0 times 2 squared plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 0, right? And this gives us 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1, right? And this is just 11. Okay, right? So we can see that, you know, the exact same thing that we did um, with our decimal numbers, right, it applies to our binary numbers as well, just with the caveat that we now have a base of two instead of a base of 10. But we really followed all the same rules as we did with our normal decimal numbers that we're very familiar with. Okay, now before we continue on, there's a few pieces of terminology that I think are important to talk about. And that's going to be this LSB, this least significant bit, and this MSB, this most significant bit. And these are important because we often you know, use these when we're talking about binary numbers. And they're fairly intuitive. Our least significant bit is just our rightmost bit in our binary number. So it'll be this trailing one here, right, at the far right side of this number. And likewise, our MSB, or rather in kind of the opposite way, our MSB is the leftmost bit. So it'll be this frontmost leading bit of one right here um, in this binary number. Now our least significant bit is generally going to be our smallest power. So it'll be the thing that we multiply by two to the zero. And then um, our most significant bit will be our largest power. So it'll be two to the n minus one that we're multiplying this value by. Uh, so one in this case. 
and we use our, our LSB and our MSB for a number of things. You know, for example, we can use our LSB, our least significant bit, to determine whether or not a number is even or odd, right? And we use our MSB for a couple of things too, which leads us into a great question. What about sign numbers, right? So how do we represent uh, negative numbers in binary? So you know, up until this point, we've been looking at unsigned numbers. So we only go from zero to some positive value in our binary numbers. But our programs often want to be able to use negative numbers. So how do we represent those in binary? Well, we're just going to make a slight change to how we interpret these bits. So, you know, something that I've said in a number of different videos, it's important that at the end of the day, our values stored in memory, they're just bits and we can choose to interpret them um, in a way that's convenient for us. So we can choose to interpret our binary numbers slightly differently so that we can represent negative numbers. So here we have the same uh, binary number, this 1011 that we had previously, but now I'm saying it's equal to negative five. And the thing we're going to do to make you know, our binary be able to represent a negative number is we're going to change something about the values that one of these digits can represent. Specifically, we're going to do something about our most significant bit here. So, you know, as we talked about, you know, because it's a binary number, it's a base two number, each of our digits can be one of two values. It can be either a zero or a one. But we're going to change that slightly when it comes to representing negative numbers. So now we're going to say that our, you know, our most significant bit, so this leftmost one here, we're going to go ahead and say that in this digit, we still represent two values, but those two values could be a zero or a negative one this time, right? So that's where we can start representing negative values in our binary by changing how we're interpreting this uh, most significant bit, right? This frontmost bit here. So let's go ahead and see how that looks if we break this out into that sum of products. So now for 1011, if we expand this out, we get negative one times two to the three plus zero times two to the two plus one times two to the one plus one times two to the zero, right? So the only change that we've made is we've moved, we've changed the value that this most significant bit can represent. It's now zero or negative one instead of zero or one. So when we go ahead and combine this all back together, we get negative eight plus zero plus two plus one, right? Which is just negative five, what we set up here. Now this is probably the most common way that we represent our negative numbers um, in binary, or, right, or rather when we wanna represent sign numbers, so either positive or negative, right? We typically use this format where we interpret this uh, most significant bit in this way. But there are a couple other formats as well, which we'll discuss in some later videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. Now, we've talked about unsigned numbers and we've talked about signed numbers. And one of the things we often want to know is what values can we represent given some number of bits, right? What is the minimum value we can represent and what is the maximum value? So what is the range of values that we can represent? And we'll start with our unsigned numbers here. So our range of our unsigned numbers goes from zero all the way up to two to the n minus one, where again, n is just the number of bits we have. So let's think about this and try to understand this from a bit of an intuitive perspective. So for unsigned numbers, we don't have negative numbers. So our minimum value is clearly going to be zero, right? That'll be the smallest value that we can represent with our unsigned numbers. So for example, if we have a four bit unsigned number here, our smallest value will just be all zeros, right? Now, let's think about the other side here. What is the maximum value that we can represent for an unsigned uh, number of n bits? Well, you know, if we think about what we're actually doing here, uh, we're just going to have that sum of products. And so all the sums that we're going to have is, you know, if each of our values is one, right? So um, because each of our digits represents a positive number to get the max value out of n digits, we just set them all to one. So if we turn that into a summation, we get something that looks like the sum of, you know, say two to the n minus one plus two to the n minus two plus two to the n minus three, you know, all the way down until we get to uh, two to the zero, right? Um, so we're subtracting, you know, n from n right at the very end. And we can actually simplify that summation into simply two to the n minus one here, right? So let's go ahead and see how that looks for say a four bit number. So our four bit number here, right, is just all ones. That's our maximum value that we can represent. 
So if we do that sum of products with this value, um, this is going to be 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0, right? So that's going to be 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, right? So that's going to be a total of 15. And we can plug in in into this equation that we have up here, and we get the same result. So if we have 4 bits, our result here would be 2 to the 4 minus 1, which would just be 2 to the 4, which is 16, minus 1, which is 15. So we get the same result using this formula. Okay. So that's going to be a range for our uh, unsigned numbers. So let's talk about our signed integer numbers, right? So where we have negative numbers as well as positive. Now, our smallest value that we can represent, or our minimum value, is going to be a negative value now. But we know that only one of our digits in our binary number in this format can be negative. It's that most significant bit. So our smallest value is going to be a one followed by all zeros. All of our other bits are only positive numbers. So what is the value of this going to be in kind of a general term? Well, it's going to be negative two to the n minus one, right? Remember that when we're multiplying each of the digits by a power of two, we go from two to the n minus one all the way down to two to the zero. So our frontmost bit gets multiplied by two to the n minus one. And because we're interpreting it as negative, we put a minus side in front. So the, our minimum value is going to be negative 2 to the n minus 1. So for four bits here, our minimum value is going to be uh, negative 2 to the uh, uh, 4 minus 1, which is minus 2 to the 3, which is uh, negative 8. Okay, now what about our maximum value here? So our maximum value we're saying is 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. And this looks kind of familiar to what we just saw, right? You know, our maximum value for our unsigned numbers was 2 to the n minus 1. So we can take kind of an intuitive approach based on this result to figure out why our new max value is 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. So let's think about this in the total number of bits that we have to represent our positive numbers here. So in the case of our unsigned numbers, we have n bits to represent our positive numbers, and our max value will be one less than that, right? So in this case, for four bits, uh, this turned out to be uh, 15. Now on the other side here, we've given up our most significant bit to give us range on the negative side of things, right? So instead of having n bits now, we have n minus 1 bits. So that's why we have this 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 instead of 2 to the n minus 1. Instead of having n bits to represent our positive numbers, we have n minus 1 bits now. So that's how we get this to the n minus 1 minus 1. So down here, our max for our 4 bit number will just be 7, right? So it'll be 2 to the n minus 1, which will be uh, 2 to the 3, which is 8, minus 1, which is 7. And we get the same result if we did that sum of products down here. It would just be 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0 which is four plus two plus one, which is seven. All right, so that's a basic introduction to our binary numbers and how we represent unsigned integers and signed integers and a little bit of the theory behind it. Now, like I said, there are a number of different formats for our integer numbers that we'll talk about in later videos. We'll also be talking about how we perform arithmetic operations right, on these binary numbers, and also how we represent things like floating point numbers, and even things like strings in the form of characters and with the, has ASCII encoding. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.